Band of Brothers and the Pacific are all-time favorites for many people around the world. So when the announcement was made that HBO would film a new series about the American Army 8th Air Corps, we, like you may have done, jumped out of our seat with pure excitement. But a few years have gone by and we're still waiting for its release. So we, from Disputed History, decided to take matters into our own hands and dive into the book the series is based on, and give you a rough sketch of what you could expect when the series finally does drop. In part one, we will lay the foundation of our mini-series and go into detail about the philosophy and the strategy of the Mighty Eight of the American Air Corps. An American pilot by the name of William Mitchell once flew over a battlefield in Belgium during the First World War. When he took a look out of his plane he saw a battlefield filled with artillery craters, barbed wire and zigzagging trenches. The position of troops hadn't moved an inch since the opening barrage in 1914. When he eventually touched down he remarked the following, attrition of gradually killing the enemy was all the Grand Armies were capable of. Mitchell was quite right in his observations. Because the technological advances that were made before the start of the Great War granted the defense formidable weapons like the machine gun and artillery. While the army successfully embraced these new developments, the commanding officers didn't change their approach to how a battle was to be fought. Old tactics and new weaponry, a lethal combination. Suicidal head-on attacks on well-entrenched enemies resulted in a loss of life that was unprecedented in human history. Generals sought hopelessly to break this stalemate on the battlefield and experimented with gas-filled artillery shells, tanks and fighter planes, but to no avail. The war kept on going and whole generations were sent to their death. In their desperation, the leader of the opposing armies determined that civilians were valuable military targets as well. They concluded that the producers of weapons are much easier to intimidate than the battle-hardened soldiers. Their orders to the Air Corps were simple. Throw bombs on cities and see what it does. Even though the first ever air raids were relatively small, they had a tremendous impact on the morale of civilians and resulted in mass panic in London and Cologne. The Supreme Commander of the American Army in the First World War wasn't impressed by the results from his bombers and remarked, the Air Corps' main task is to support the army. It can't of its own account neither win a war at present time, nor, as far as we can tell, in any time in the future. When Mitchell returned to the States after the First World War, he envisioned a new way of how wars needed to be fought. He said, Better to decide a war by terrorizing the population with a few gas bombs than the present methods of blowing people to bits with cannon projectiles and butchering them with bayonets. His goal was plain and simple reducing casualties. Mitchell was so convinced of his revolutionary idea that he wrote several rousing articles and held public lectures with the goal to persuade people within the government to support his philosophy with money and recognition. The fruits of his labor? There weren't any. In the 1920s there was no plane available to carry out his idea and the high-ranking officials of the army didn't want anything to do with bombing innocent civilians. And to top it all off, the army and the navy saw the Air Corps as a rifle, which could potentially suck up money and influence. However, his vision did resonate with some young and enthusiastic officers within the lower echelons of the army. And even though their characters would now and then collide, they had one thing in common. Total devotion to the air. This small group of fanatics were later baptized as the Bomber Mafia. And their mantra? We make progress unhindered by custom. They rationalized strategic bombing and the effect that it had on the population without taking into account the suffering it could cause. A Bomber Mafia member later summarized it as follows. War is a very nasty business and you're going to kill a lot of people. No way getting around it. Any morale commander tries to minimize this, the best way to do that is getting the war over as quickly as possible. To achieve this, the Bomber Mafia developed a brand new doctrine in the 20s and 30s. They came up with the idea of daylight precision bombing with the goal of knocking out strong points of a modern industrial country. Steel factories, oil refineries, railroad hubs and power plants were targets that could bring down a whole country. 
In one of their most famous lectures, a member of the Bomber Mafia claimed that 17 well-placed bombs on the right targets in the vicinity of New York would cause major problems for the inhabitants of this city. These problems would be so catastrophic that it would lead to revolution and ultimately bring down a government. Just like Mitchell, the Bomber Mafia concluded that the population of a country in war would play a significant role. While they strategized for the upcoming war, they were helped in the 1930s by new technological advances. The Norton bombsite made its entrance and with it, the bold promise that it was the most accurate bombsite in the world. The developers of this gimmick weren't wrong. In test runs with clear skies, the bombs always hit their targets. If you combine this magnificent piece of technology with the development of one of the most iconic planes of its age, the B-17, the Bomber Mafia had everything they ever desired. A high altitude bomber that could outrun fighter planes with its speed and could fly high enough to avoid anti-aircraft fire. With this in mind, the Bomber Mafia was so sure, almost arrogant, that they waived the opportunity to develop an escort fighter plane with the capability of keeping up with the range of the B-17. A decision that would come back to haunt them. But after all the articles, public lectures, technological advances and developed tactics, the Bomber Boys of the Army Air Corps were sent to Europe in 1942 with nothing to fall back on. The new doctrine, which looked good on paper, would be battle tested in the highly contested skies over Europe where the Luftwaffe roamed the air as a hungry predator. This was part one of the Masters of the Air miniseries. We hoped you enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you liked part one, Please like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss part two. And as always, see you next time.